Oh dear, we're about to play another thrilling game of What's Helmet Marco Said Now? Well, if he's not careful, probably not much more. The rumors are starting to circulate around the infamous Red Bull consultant, Helmut Marco, as there's reportedly going to be a meeting with Red Bull senior staff this week to determine the future of the outspoken advisor for Christian Horner and the mouthpiece of the CEO of the entire Red Bull drinks company. Even though Christian Horner has said that he actually doesn't work for the Formula One team and he's not even on their payroll, so what gives? Why is Helmut Marco where he is right now and he has so much sway over the team? Well, put simply, it's down to the fact that he was best buddies with the former CEO of Red Bull GmbH, Dietrich Mateschitz. If Helmut Marko had a problem, he would talk to Didi and then Dietrich would make sure that things were corrected or things were smoothed over, that everything would be fine. Harmony would be brought to the Red Bull group. But now that Dietrich Mateschitz is no longer here, Helmut Marko's place is tenable and therefore, He's sort of been allowed to make these really weird comments. Now the new CEO, Oliver Menslav, is not particularly bothered with having a man on the ground like Helmer Marko, probably more likely trusting what he hears from Christian Horner because you know he's meant to be the team principal and the boss of Red Bull, so why does he need this other guy? He doesn't need a direct line because he's already got a direct line Christian Horner. So it's a little bit irrelevant right now. Menslav is keen to move on from the model and I don't blame him for doing that. Part of the reason why I think Sergio Perez has been in a downward spiral this season is of course the car not being suited to his taste, and something he requested recently was to actually revert the RB19 back to its Barcelona spec. That being the last time I reckon that Sergio Perez actually was feeling comfortable with the car, but understandably, that was rejected by the Red Bull team. And maybe he might be able to perform better, but I can also see why Red Bull rejected it because, um, have you seen how much the other teams have caught up? They've been on a desperate development drive the entire season. Why would you go back to a car at the start of the season? McLaren are probably past the Barcelona spec Red Bull right now, so the odds of Checo being swallowed up by other teams is even more likely than having the latest and greatest car, but he can't drive it as well. So which, which would work more? But Red Bull clearly don't want to take the risk, and uh, yeah, that would just make Checo's situation even worse if he wants to keep his seat. Then I reckon it was the foolhardy decision that, oh yeah, that Max Verstappen guy, the guy who pretty much eats, lives and breathes motorsport in some way ever since he was the age of minus three when he was just a twinkle in Jos Verstappen's eyes. Yeah, I could take him. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> no, you do not. You do not take on Max Verstappen unless you have equal or better machinery. No, by the time he got to Miami, he was completely defeated. You start near the front and then your teammate just whooshes by you starting 15th. 15th! And goes on to win. That would break anybody. But I think the main cause of it is because of all of these weird passive aggressive comments from Helmut Marko, sometimes actually aggressive, that then goes to the media, everybody spins it, the entire world agrees and then suddenly goes, Chaco sucks! Even though he was known for a long time as the tire whisperer one of the most solid drivers on the grid. And of course, I have made videos about Checo, but I do give him credit when credit is due when he's able to get above it. And I want him to stay and see out his contract. But all of this came from one guy, because as you've been able to tell, Christian Horner, whilst he has been negative of Checo, has been more supportive in a way. But I can see his playbook that this is just the beginning. Then he gets serious and then he thinks, well, there's nothing more we could do. We've tried our best. But you can tell there's a bit more support going on there, at least on the surface. Marco just comes in with a bulldozer and goes, we're not having any of that. I'm going to tell it how it is. Do you really want that, though? It's only gotten worse since the summer break ended. It's descended into terrible statements that are hateful, disrespectful, xenophobic, not at all constructed, if you want your driver to finish second in the championship ahead of Lewis Hamilton. And according to rumours, he actually has been given an ultimatum, Checo. You finish second, or you're out. Daniel Ricciardo is going to replace you. And then you see all of these things that Daniel Ricciardo is posting on Instagram, that helmet on the number three. What is he trying to say here? Is it done and dusted? Is he just trying to will destiny in his favor? It's just, it's just really sad. The Red Bull Instagram, it's like you barely even know that Checo was Max Verstappen's teammate. It's just, 
It's a complete mess, honestly. And the thing that really, really ground my gears was that over the space of four days, Marco was vacillating on what he actually was thinking about alternatives for Sergio Perez. The most recent comment saying that, oh, well, we have a lack of alternatives. You know, we don't really have any drivers that could replace Sergio Perez. So uh, what can we do? There's not really much we can do. We just hope he gets better. But a few days earlier, he was reminding to try and get Sergio Perez out of his negative spiral that they have three AlphaTauri drivers and a lot can happen. It's like, what kind of cryptic message is that, Marco? In one breath, you say, well, we've got to do our best we can to get Checo out of this downward spiral he's found himself in. But you've got to remember, there are three drivers that could replace you. What can happen in the future? That's not going to get anywhere. I wonder how he wound up in that spiral. So I bet you're thinking, well, OK, why can't Christian Horner fire him then? Just get him out of the picture entirely. Well, as I said earlier, he can't do that because he's not on the payroll or in the employee list of Red Bull Racing. He works for the Red Bull company, the global company, as an advisor, making sure that everything is going tickety-boo with the F1 team, which I think it's safe to say they're doing just fine. They are doing very, very well, thank you very much. And I think Christian Horner is now thinking, well, we can we can run it ourselves. We don't need an advisor, especially one that goes against everything I'm trying to say and potentially undermining me. I don't blame Christian Horner for now getting sick and tired, even though Helmut Marko was instrumental in him starting the path that got him to where he is today in Formula 3000 when Christian Horner was a driver and a mediocre one, but he was a driver. What Horner wants to play is the sympathetic coach, doing his best for his players, getting the best out of them. Him being like, oh, it's OK, Checo, you've done your best. Here at Red Bull, we just like our drivers to so give it a go. Whereas Helmut Marko is just going, well, I don't see what the problem is. I, you know, he's not he's not stepping up to the plate. And, you know, I, I mean, well, I'm not going to go any further about what he said, but you know what I'm talking about. I think there's good reason why Christian might have had enough of this, because this year, in fact, before the season ends, Christian Horner will turn 50. And I'm pretty sure that he's now thinking about his legacy. What happens to the team after he's gone? Because he may be there for a good 10, 15, 20 years, maybe. Depends on what he wants to do. But he may not want to. In a few years time, he might want to spend more time with his family. He's done enough for Formula One and maybe he might want to call it a day. So right now, when the team is doing really well, you can start to set up some really good ideas and good methods and structures that will last the test of time after he has left. He has got a new CEO for the AlphaTauri group, Peter Bayer. He's got a new team principal in Lauren Meckes because Franz Tost is now going into retirement. He wants to make sure that everything is stable because he's looking back to the era after Michael Schumacher retired for the first time. The senior staff at Ferrari slowly frittered away. That dream team that set up their dominance in the early 2000s and then Ferrari just completely fell to bits. And then we got the revolving doors of all of the team principals from Maurizio Riverbene to when we got to Mattia Bonotto, which was somewhat stable. So Christian Horner saw all of that. He was there for that and he does not want that to happen to his team. So he wants to set things up so it'll do very good. The Helmut Marco being there, that is not part of his equation and all it's doing is making it out to be completely well, useless, not being able to take care of this guy who is not even on his payroll. And I bet Helmut Marko is also a little bit sore because actually he was instrumental in how the Toro Rosso Alpha Tauri team was run back in the day. And now that's being taken away from him. So right now, Helmut Marko feels threatened because he's not got the guy at the top anymore that he can actually mouth off to. His junior team project's been slowly taken away from him. So he's just trying to find a way to actually remain somewhat important. About that, getting young drivers in, well, uh, Red Bull's not really been doing well at that lately. They've been very slow. You can attribute it to a lot of things, but one catalyst could be Max Verstappen. With his meteoric success and promotion to the top team, you could easily see Max at Red Bull for over a decade, matching that or going longer than what Lewis Hamilton has done for Mercedes. You get Helmut Marko constantly thumping his chest and going, that was me. I got Max Verstappen into the Formula One. You should credit me for Max's dominance. Me! That is starting to get a little bit old because there have been far fewer drivers over the last few years from the Red Bull Junior campaign actually getting into Formula One. You're then in that position with Liam Lawson in four races showing that, hey, this guy's pretty good. He acted like a really good substitute for Daniel Ricciardo. And now he's not been guaranteed a seat for next year. I mean, currently. And then you get Daniel Ricciardo coming back in, having spurned Red Bull in 2018. And then you're getting almost what we got when Renault and Alpine signed Fernando Alonso. Wow. 
That guy's a very old junior driver. When you got one senior seat locked, there is really not much room at the top team if you want to try and get your time in the big leagues. And you're going up against Max Verstappen, now a three-time world champion, one of the most mercurial drivers we have ever seen in the sport, an honest, straight-talking guy who is not going to pull any punches with you. And if you think you're going to get anything from him, think again. He's thinking about his own race. He is not going to be a friendly teammate who will help you out. A rookie or a young driver next to Max Verstappen, they are literally throwing them to the lions. And that makes sense because Max Verstappen's symbol is a lion. In short, there is a big power struggle at Red Bull right now. Nobody's quite sure about how things are going to be working. Christian Horner's trying to do one thing, whereas Marco is stamping his feet and trying to remain important. And it's clearly grating everybody up, driving them up the wall. Every other day you hear Helmut Marco talking about something and you think, oh, are you really sure you want to be talking about that? Because Christian wasn't saying that. It's every other week or every other day. I'm sick and tired of it myself. But if Marco somehow survives, his contract with Red Bull GmbH ends in 2024. So he may just hang in there, not renew his contract with them. I'm going to predict that in the not too distant future, you are going to hear the headline, Helmut Marco to retire early from the Red Bull group. You're not going to get him being fired or anything like that. He has admittedly done quite a lot for the Red Bull organization. He has been instrumental in setting up the Formula One team before he decided to mouth off all of the time. He was instrumental in getting the likes of Max Verstappen into Formula One and them having a concrete top driver and potential glory for years to come. You can't deny that. But you can be a little bit annoyed about the fact that he goes on about it all the time. I think that he is going to be done at the end of next year at the latest because he's in his 80s now. He really needs to just kind of take it easy and not work as hard. He's done enough. Just let Christian Horner do what he wants to do. Set things up so that means he can feel comfortable about retiring whenever he would like to. And right now, Helmut Marko is not helping. His friend at the top is gone. He is feeling vulnerable and he's lashing out at everybody, especially if your name is Sergio Perez. So as you can tell, Red Bull courts itself with chaos all of the time at the moment. And I think all of this could have been attributed to Carlos Sainz of all people. Why do I think this? Well, watch this video next and you'll understand more. Thank you.